redundant with your with your you know reactive elements. That's a very challenging deck to beat. So on the left here we have a face that you guys are probably likely familiar with, and Brian Brondwon. And he is playing, as we just spoke of, he is playing Bug. Uh, he's been one of the people who's been championing this deck. His version has more Planeswalkers than most. Um, he has, of course, four of the Gist of Mind Sculptor. He also has two Liliana Veil and Garrick Relentless. And then you are going to find those cards we spoke of. Deathrite Shaman, Tarmogoyf, and four copies of Abrupt Decay here. And on your right, you see uh, Otan Kotov, who is also playing Bug Control. But uh, curiously enough, no, president, no copies of Deathrite Shaman you found in this deck. It's just hmm. Tombstalker, Vendillion Click. Uh, Snapcaster Mage and Scavenging Goose. Uh, some Planeswalkers, uh, a couple copies of Innocent Blood, some Soft Counters, uh, Discard, Pernicious Deed. So definitely a... I mean, we've seen this deck over the years multiple times, yeah. but we haven't really seen this build since Deathrite Shaman has been a feature of the format. Yeah. So it's kind of old school versus new school here, if you will. Brian's Eclis has, you know, three copies of Wasteland. It also has three Mirror's Factories uh, and has two copies of Life from the Loam. So he kind of he kind of tries to attack your lands as well here and uses his own lands to his advantage. There's a Creeping Tar Pit. Uh, there aren't any other value lands. You're not going to find a card like Volrash Stronghold or some of the other kind of cool lands that you can play in Legacy. Uh, just straightforward stuff with Wasteland and Mirror's Factory to go with his Life from the Loams. Uh, also noteworthy is uh, Altan Kotov is from, actually from Russia. There was a couple of Russian... Uh, IQs, Invitational Qualifiers, and made the trip all the way from Russia. Branching out. Yeah. Branching out. A little who, international flair of these events. Yeah, who wants to win the Invitational? They're becoming they're becoming like like small pro tours. Yes. They really are. We'll have Kenji here in no time <laughs> to just win and take everything from us like yeah. he used to many years ago. Yeah, we could use a good, you know, 19-0 slash 38-0 tournament at one of our... Yeah, absolutely. Just run it straight through. Absolutely. 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 So, yeah, I'm curious to see what folks uh, out on to sort of move into, you know, Deathrite Shaman's been the talk of the format since Return to Ravnica has come out. And eschewing that card, um, I'm sure it's, it, it can't be for no reason, right? It's, yeah, I mean, yeah. There, there has to be a reason. It's a conscious decision, as we see at Thoughtseize here from Brian. Uh, we see a bunch of Repticates, a Force of Will, a Tomb Stalker, and some lands, so. Um, Tomb Stalker, definitely an awesome threat if people are moving to... Uh, Abrupt Decay is the removal suite. Now, it's an interesting keep here. And, you know, it's kind of interesting, you know, as we said, it's kind of new school versus old school here. Natan's deck list has four copies of Forceful. Brian's, none. Yes. Which is surprising. I mean, you play blue, you can you play Forceful. It's like a rule, an unwritten rule of legacy, whereas he actually only has two counter spells. And yeah. then discard and, you know, the, the creatures and the planeswalkers. So, actual no copies of Forceful here. Well, the deck definitely has a, a bunch of green and black cards, so Force of Will is no free roll. Uh, additionally, unless you're heavily metagaming for a combo field, it's possible that he would rather just lean on his discard, which is good against a variety of opponents, and maybe sideboard some Force of Wills or similar cards for the dedicated combo matchups. So both, both players here are having to play just draw go for a little bit. We have a Deathrite Shaman. No, we have an Inquisition. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought, okay. was, I thought he drew one, so I thought we were... And we have a response here. We're going to sack our two fetch lands. Brian would counterspell backup in case anything goes awry. We also see one copy of Garrick Relentless in Brian's hand. This is another card that's sort of picked up in popularity over the last couple weeks. I think a lot of it as an answer for the mirror match. It's very good at killing Deathbreak Shamans and then is a pretty impressive threat on its own after that. Yeah, just generating all sorts of value, kind of playing a makeshift Elspeth. Not as good, of course, but, you know, it kind of does different things through then Elspeth. So, Anton going to go pick up some Blackwater Duels. We'll see what the response is to this Inquisition in a moment. A Vendillion click. Okay. Brian reaching for his polluted delta, so I assume we're going to see a counterspell momentarily. Going old school. Yeah. Just flat counterspell. Nothing actual. cute. No miscalculation. No memory lapse. No cute cards. Just actual counterspell. Counter target spell. Taking us back to a simpler time. Mm. I miss those days. Mm. That, is the, that is the charm of legacy. You can relive your youth. Brian says it's time for Vanillion Click to leave. If you so don't, I'm curious mind. to see if we're gonna force back on this counterspell. 
This would be quite the battle over over this sort of card, and it looks like. Yeah, Anton's hand is just two force of wills and two abrupt decays, so. I think he has to fight over this because his hand's just too bad otherwise. Yeah, we see a force of will. And we know Brian doesn't have access to any in his main deck. Of course, Anton doesn't know that, but we are going to see Vendillion click. Upstairs we go. You're going to see Maelstrom Pulse, Abrupt Decay, Garrick, and Wasteland. So, plenty of redundant answers for that. And the thing that's a little bit interesting to me, Patrick, uh, and you can obviously disagree, is just fighting over Vendillion click in this particular matchup doesn't really seem like something that you really want to do. And the reason I say that is just because there are so many different ways for, for the bug control decks to kill it. I mean, um, there's Uncounterable Boys and Abrupt Decay. You know, there are there can be cards like Innocent Blood. In, in, Brian case, in Brian's case, he has Garrick and Maelstrom Pulse. So there are so many different ways, Ghastly Demise, if people are playing that, to kill this creature. That kind of fighting over this and, you know, Force of Will and, like, kind of losing all the cards. Is it really worth it just to get the 3-1 in play that's probably not going to live? Well, I, I think it's correct for Anton to be forcing back here because his hand's just too bad. It, it's... Like, it's just nice for him to be able to click here. Sure. Um, from Brian's perspective, I like the counter spell because that means you get to play, um, if your counter spell actually resolves, then you get to play your gear uncontested next turn. And sure. then you have a lot of insurance. But So I like it from both players' perspective. I don't think it's so much being worried about the Vendelia click, about just the way their hands are specifically situated. Anton Hand was just too bad. Sure. He's got to fight over something, you know? Might as well be a card that can allow him to provide some disruption, or if Brian's hand is especially bad, maybe just clock him a bunch. So Anton's draw step last turn was a force of will, um, and it's kind of, again, kind of the new school, old school vibe that we're playing on here. You can see, like, how mediocre force of will is here, mm -hmm. where it's kind of nice that Brian doesn't have that card in his deck. You know, counter spell served his purpose. It was a one for one, whereas force of will is a two for one on yourself. And you know, force of will, it didn't really accomplish what it needed to. And now Anton is just kind of behind end cards. You know, he has a Vendillion click that's hoping it can do something, even though there's an abrupt decay. So you know, just like the way that, the, how grindy the matchup is, this isn't really where force of will is at its best. Yeah. It is definitely a sacred cow to a lot of people, but uh, I think there's plenty of matchups where it just isn't particularly good, and we're seeing one right now. Well, if you're expecting a lot of bug, like moving forward in the tournaments, I can easily see like just not playing Forceable in your main deck and just moving it to your sideboard for those combo matchups. Yep. It's a uh, and definitely Click is also a little bit dodgy in Lingering Souls world too. I mean, yeah. it, it used to be sort of a general all-purpose utility creature. But I think given the structure of the Esper Blade decks and the Bug decks, that it's basically an anti-combo card at this point. Yeah. I don't think it's very good in these kind of mashups anymore, where it was once upon a time. Yeah. As we see, the Abrupt Decay took care of the Vendillion Click that we knew about, and Anton, of course, knew that was coming. Um, but now, it's just kind of like, all right, well, there's a Tarmogoyf. We know that there's a Garrick Relentless over there. We see the Wasteland from Brian that can kind of mess up the mana base a little bit. Yeah, I don't want to pronounce a game over, of course, because we have a long way to go, but, I mean, things are looking very, very difficult here for Anton. He's going to respond to this wasteland with a Vendillion click. And we'll see what response we get out of Brian here. I got to say, I would not mind playing Burn against these decks. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Death Rite Shaman doesn't scare you at all, either? Not really, no. I, I didn't really think so. It's a pretty, it's a pretty big investment, right? I'm it's watching gonna... all these, like juicy non-basics and these board control cards and there's no counters and all these thought <laughs> seizes and I mean I got the box behind me part of me wants to just just hop in for a round or two <laughs> they don't even have to count they don't even have to just let me let me get in some it's reps a friendly, you know? a friendly challenge yeah that's all show you guys what you're missing as we see a brainstorm here from Brian in response to Vidalia like gonna you know maybe hide some cards you know, maybe put a card on top that he wants to draw. There is no fetch land in place, so he doesn't have the great interaction there yet, but does probably want to hide some information. So we're going to see Abrupt Decay with the trigger on the stack. And here and you go. You may take this useless pernicious deed, or you may keep it. And yeah, Anton having none of that, he's just going to let him keep the deed. Yeah. The Wasteland is gone. And we do see a Tarmogoyf as a 4-5 right now, and just pass it back. And I think Brian's going to be able to almost certainly untap and land Garrick. And 
Although Creeping Tar Pit, a nice draw against that to break up the Planeswalker. Yeah, a good draw post Wasteland. Well, so long as Anton has another land, he'll be doing okay. Not great, of course. Still has to be able to deal with this Tarmogoyf and the Wolf token that Garrick will likely make. But, I mean, it's a step in the right direction. Yeah, this has got to be super frustrating for Prime because he sculpted this game so nicely to just be about Garrick on sale aboard and just ride that. And now that, that Creeping Tar Pit makes it much more challenging. Yeah. You see he's not even willing to commit his Garrick. He's going to set Deed so he can try to Deed for zero and land Garrick the following turn. Yep. Because we do see Tarmogoyf just coming across. Pernicious Deed back in the day. That one is an oldie but a goodie. One of the cool interactions with that, as we see Tarmogoyf die, is that you cannot kill your own Planeswalkers with it. I'm I pretty actually sure. Thought, I actually thought I want to be cool, wrong about that. I actually thought the cool interaction with it was that you could regenerate your spirit monger. I think that, ah, yes. I thought that was the reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's okay. That's okay. That's a dream world. Yeah. And now you're about to see the Garrick. And Brian set this up very nicely because he had the deed even though he knew about D Abrupt Decay. And so now he gets the inform he got to lead with that decay before he attacks it to have information about how he wants to sculpt the game out. If Anton's happy to Abrupt Decay the Tarmogoyf, then we can go on the we can set, you know, have our deed at zero as insurance and, and have Garrick take over the game. If Anton is gonna abrupt decay the pernicious deed, then you can just try to ride your Tarmogoyf to victory. Yeah. So we had two different paths you could pursue based on what angle Anton decided to take. And now Garrick is in play. We'll have a wolf token join us in just a moment. Of course, nothing to fight. And just passing back. And now, yeah, interestingly enough, I mean, as you said at the top, it is kind of interesting to see this card I don't want to say dominating legacy or anything, but it's having an impact. Oh, we, didn't, we didn't think it would beforehand. Yeah, no, I mean, these these control decks are just, they're in, and, and Chase is the best example of this. They're looking for cards that can both provide utility, defend themselves, and also just win the game on their own yeah. once you're at the four mana line. No one's going to confuse Garrick with Jace, but Garrick can fill a different style of that effect. Yeah. And killing Death Right Shaman is, is also pretty awesome, given the way these mirror matches are. And especially, and as you bring up that it kills Death Right Shaman, then it flips into its other half, and then it's able to make those Death Touch tokens, with which, which lets you trade favorably with Tarmogoyf, which is a really mm -hmm. kind of unique interaction, as we do see a Tarmogoyf here from Brian. There's just a lot going on. And with a card that has that much text like Garrick does, you know, it's it, it's surprising because you think of it as a standard card, but once you kind of dig a little bit deeper, it's not too surprising to see a card like this have success in Legacy, just because there's so much that the card can do. Yep. No, no end of utility, and often with these planeswalkers, it's just waiting for the metagame to be in a particular spot where it's, it's plus power and it's first minus power are productive things to be doing. Yeah. And Garrick appears to be, at least for the time being, in that spot, and you're seeing it you know, do a number of this game. Anton looking over his options. You see it, Innocent Blood. There is a Force of Will as well. I believe there's a blue card hanging out as well. Not quite sure. I believe it is Snapcaster Mage. Okay. Yeah. Know, either way, Innocent Blood looking just very bad right now. And and Brian Sech just looking so much more efficient for the mirror match in yeah. this game. I mean, there's no there's no fat here. Every card he's played has been awesome. Whereas, you know, Anton's been trying to cobble together one for once and defend himself where he can. And yeah. You know, Brian is just doing his thing. And you did know that, you know, kind of walking into this tournament, I mean, I mean this, this certainly helped with me just talking to the players last night and this morning, just it seemed like, you know, the, the people couldn't really give a good reason or great reason why Bug is the deck to beat. You know, it doesn't, you know, doesn't it just scream the power level of like a Storm deck or any of the combo decks in the format. Um, but, you know, it's just a good deck. There's just a lot of good things going on, kind of like in the same mold of a Rug Delver. It's just a good deck that just does proactive things. Mm -hmm. And so this is the kind of deck that people felt that was, you know, one of the decks that they'd have to be prepared for to beat in the tournament. And, I mean, you can tell right now with the way, with the way that Brian has built his deck that that was, it seems like his first line of thinking. Uh, I'm going to have to beat a, be able to beat the Mirror once, maybe two times this weekend. Oh, there's no question that... What he has, I mean, he even has Loam Wasteland as a backup engine. That's incredible in the mirror. You yeah. Know? Like, look at look at Anton's lands. It, it, you know, that's just another incidental angle that, that Brian has afforded to him here. Yeah, these bug decks very often, they do not play, like, any basics. They may play one. You know, if you're looking at Brian's deck list, he doesn't have any. That's not really much of a surprise. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very difficult to be able to play, you know, Liliana and Jace and a bunch of green cards unless you are just willing to play 
just all fetches and duels. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, Anton actually does have four Swamp Island in his deck. Wow. He, and two Creeping Tar Pits, which is impressive. It looks like he's mostly... I guess he's shaved out some fetches. He has uh, only eight, it looks like. So a little lighter than you would usually see in all these decks. And so we are going to see Snapcaster Mage here. Uh, abrupt decaying and then getting in front of a wolf token. So trying to stave off elimination as best he can. But again, without any real permanent answer for that, Garrick, that's the kind of card that's just going to dominate. It's going to take a little while, of course, but it's the kind of card that just dominates a board state. And so does that one. Yeah, we've... We've seen this. We've seen this before. Yeah. If you're new to Legacy, Jace the Mind Sculptor on a stable board means the game is almost certainly over. <laughs> yeah. So we'll just wait for Brian to sort of go about his business, brainstorming. I mean, he actually could just pick a, a mode at random from here. <laughs> It'd be fine. <laughs> Fade sealing himself or Anton or brainstorming. I guess on summoning the wolf is bad, but that's pretty much. Well, that's just like taking a challenge, right? <laughs> See exactly how good Jace is. Yeah. And uh, Anton seeing the writing on the wall here. Yeah, just, you know, kind of going through the motions here. I mean, plenty of time left in the round. There's no real reason to concede at this point. Just, he can likely get some more information, but the game is basically over with Jason Garrick in play and no real answer. Anton comes to that realization and does scoop it up. Yeah, it's surprising to me that some of these, uh, I guess. I don't know what the opportunity cost is of adding another color, but these bug control mirrors, it seems like they're so soft to planeswalkers that there's got to be some card you could add. I don't know if it has to be... Maybe you have to move into white for Vindicate or something, but... I mean, you, can get, you can get a little spicy, play like Dreadbore. Sure. You know, you can splash red for that. I don't know what else red would give you. You know, there's like red elemental blast and, you know, who knows what else, but you can get a little spicy. I mean, Legacy lets you do some things with your mana. Yeah, I mean, all these matches I see, it's one of them... And then these mirror matches, someone... Lands a planeswalker, and the other guy's like, "All right, I'm, I'm, I'm dead, I guess." <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I didn't see this coming. I didn't think anyone was gonna cast Jace, so who knew, you know? All right, sideboard. Uh, you have Anton's in front of you. What's what's saving him? He's got some gas. I mean, he's got a couple copies of Surgical Extraction, a Garrick the Relentless, um, another Scavenging Ooze, a Thoughtseize, a Duress, a Life from the Loam. He's got a bunch of weird one ofs at all seem very well suited to be to playing some sort of grindy attrition game so i would expect certainly the loam is is awesome garrick as we saw very good uh and then i don't know how he wants to mix up the spot removal i would i would probably bring in extraction because the odds i mean when two control decks and legacy play against each other it's very natural to try to move more into getting value out of your graveyard as a space to go to because the game goes on for a long time uh, so, I would be inclined to bring in Surgical Extraction here as well. And taking a look at Brian's deck list, and as you went over Anton's, you know, he does have the life in the loam of the Garrick Relentless, and it just kind of harps on our point of, you know, Brian, you can already tell that he built his deck with the mirror in mind, and then you look at Anton's deck list of bringing in Garrick and bringing in, you know, Thought Season stuff that, you know, he knows that the mirror exists, but he is not tailor-made for it as Brian is, mm -hmm. which doesn't surprise me that Brian won game one. And Brian actually has even more cards to bring in for this particular matchup. He has a Sylvan Library, which is a fantastic tool in this matchup to just make sure you're always finding your best cards. Um, he has two copies of Endillion Click, which is a card that Anton is starting. He has two copies of, but Brian does not have two copies of. There's also an additional thought seeds. There's also an interesting card here in Dark Blast which has a roundabout way of taking care of Vendillion Click, Snapcaster Mage, um, you, you know, so Deathrite Shaman if Anton had them. So I'm not sure if those are going to come in, but I mean, it's definitely an option. And I, I assume all these Planeswalkers are going to stay here in the main deck for Brian. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do expect Dark Blast to come in as well. Anytime you can mill yourself for value when you have Snapcaster Mage, Deathrite Shaman, and Life from the Lone as an even more devastating card to put in your sure. graveyard to get your Wasteland loop going... I would expect that to come in as well. Yeah, it's almost too good to pass up, honestly. Um, I mean, other cards that can come out, you know, it's debatable. You know, he gets like two copies of Counterspell, even though Counterspell looked pretty good that game. He has one Pernicious Deed, uh, which, I mean, looked fine that game. I don't know if it's the kind of card you want in a grindy matchup. He has one Inquisition, four Thought Seasons. Maybe he swaps out an Inquisition for the four Thought Seasons. What have you. He's a Maelstrom Pulse, maybe not that great here with the other options available. But some things are going to be moving in and out here. But I think that, you know, Brian's deck, again, is just incredibly well set up for the mirror. You know what card I think is stanky in the mirror? Do tell. I think Tomergoyf is stanky in the mirror. Just because it dies? It just doesn't do anything and dies. If they have one, doesn't nothing happens. If they have Abrupt Decay in your otherwise permanent light deck, it just dies. 
and you're going to afford to take a hit or two because you have no reach. So that would be the card I would go to. It's possible your opponent's just siding in more removal spells anyway. So you think you can just break that rule? Just board out Tarmago if you're a tough guy? I board out Goyf all the time. It's like a rune legacy. It's just like if it's in your deck, it's just got to stay. That's not, it's just not true. All it's right. simply not true. You want to have your Tarmogoyf against Innocent Blood, Abrupt Decay guy, be my guess, but I'd rather try to just lean on the Planeswalkers and your Loam Wasteland player to win the game. Those seem like much better paths to victory than attacking for four or five times yeah. against a all cantrip and kill spell deck. Yeah, trying, to, try, <laughs> trying to steal one with the old Goyf right. doesn't seem like the best plan. I don't, I don't disagree with you at all. I'll be interested to see if, he, if either player does board them out. Well, um, uh, Anton actually doesn't have them at all. He's just on Tombstalker, Click, Snapcaster, Ooze. And just, all those cards are, are, are probably... I mean, Click is not great here, but it still provides some amount of flexibility and utility and disruption, whereas Tarmogoyf is literally just an attacker and blocker. Yeah. I mean, that one's very interesting to me. Not having Deathrite Shaman is, you know, one thing. I mean, that's, it, it, you know, it's whatever. Maybe you just haven't had the chance to play with it, and you know, maybe, you don't, maybe you don't believe it's that real, but not having Tarmogoyf in your bug deck, I don't know, that's just it's very surprising to me not to have it there anywhere. I think, uh, I think Tarmogoyf uh, is overrated and gets played too much, so I like, I like the angle Anton's taking here. I'm a big supporter. Okay. Starts off the game with two Deltas. Brian has an underground city. We're going to see a Misty Rainforest here as well. So, again, we saw this in the previous game. Just a little bit of draw-go action, and then, then the things start firing fast and furious. Yeah, and Anton just drew a duress. So I would be willing to bet we might see our first uh, salvo fired off here. You know, yeah. As long as that duress is forcing through something relevant, I'm, I'm perfectly okay with it. I'd be perfectly fine sitting on it too, though. You might want. He also might be trying to set up Snapcaster Duress next turn sure. as a line that he might want, or just see what's see what's going on over there. You know, I'm curious. <laughs> the whole crowd, you know, we want to know. Show me. Any brainstorms? Oh, that's a brainstorm. All right, Hit so more. we're gonna hide. We're gonna hide some goodies here. Brian looks like he's pretty land heavy right now. I see a wasteland along got... with a couple other there. I assume by the time we're waiting here, it means that we have some spell. Yes, but he is quite land heavy. This is what I got. It's a goif. Okay. So yeah, the downside... The, basically, the downside to this play from Brian's perspective is that he had to brainstorm away spells and keep lands. Ideally, he would have used that brainstorm to help out with his mana flood a little bit. Yeah. But instead, he's keeping his spells. It's almost close to the point where you would put two lands back, let him duress something, and then shuffle away the two lands. Yeah. Ryan's hand's almost bad enough where that's, that could have been a, a path to consider. Which is why I believe Brian actually tanked so long there. Because normally you would just be instantaneously, yep, brainstorm put my two spells back, but yeah. Because his hand's so land heavy, it was actually a, a debate. So we're going to see an Inquisition of Kozilect here from Brian Anton giving it a read. It is spells that cost three or less, and we are going to see a Polluted Delta sacked in response. And get another C. And now with, with, with Anton having the basic forest in play, it's very likely to be fetching for Cs because he can't get wastelanded off of color now. Yeah. So that's part of the uh, part of the benefit, and we're going to see. Ooh, divert. divert! Oh my goodness! Oh, I, I misread that on the. D oh my god, divert's an oldie but a goodie. Can I take a look? May I divert you, my friend? Unfortunately, it doesn't actually get to get anything because we already know Brian's hand is. It's Lance and Tarmogoyf. Oh, it's the Goyf. Oh, that's his Inquisition. Oh my yeah. god, it's not duress. Yeah. Oh, this is Anton going back. And you cannot, you cannot fail to, you can't fail to find on a reveal. So that's actually. You just take a card that costs three or less. So yeah, I mean, you cannot fail to find on a reveal. It's not, it's not like a surgical extraction where you can search the deck and not and intentionally leave something. Yeah. On a reveal from a public zone, you you just have to. So. And it's interesting because Brian could have played his land first before doing that and didn't, and now we see the wasteland yeah. after the divert blowout, and now. Now a wasteland for Anton. And yeah. Anton not using the wasteland, signaling an expensive play in his hand. Possibly Jace, possibly Garrick, but... 
And there's Garrick. And there is Garrick. And we can see Brian's hand. Brian's hand is just a is just full of lands and an abrupt decay was his draw step, but it makes sense. You know, there's really no reason to wasteland him, keep him off yeah. the lands when you know he has four in his hand. Yeah. Sandbagging that land there from from Brian was a little odd because even though you know it's a worst case scenario, it was divert of all cards, it could have easily been spell pierce. Yeah. So but it's hard to have that card. Of all the cards you can have on your radar to play around in Legacy. Divert. Filthy. Ugh. Oof. And now we see Garrick taking over this game, but on the other side of things. Yes. Last game we saw Brian dominate with Garrick this time, and we see Anton dominate with it. It begs the question, should there be more than one Garrick throughout these deck lists? Maybe. I, I mean, for the mirror, yeah. We, we saw I saw one list in Vegas at least last week that had two. Uh, we had a bug control back on camera, but... So... So we're going to see Vendillion click in Brian's draw step. And there's five lands. Yeah, five lands. Bite the dust from the Abrupt Decay. But Brian is, uh, I, don't have, I don't have anything. We're going to see a land just saying go. And, and we see on Anton's side, he does have that pro promo wasteland ready to take out Mistress Factory. So those wolves are still going to be able to keep getting on in. Yeah. Brian in a, a world of hurt here. Another wolf. Anton just content to sit back, you know, has some permission in his hand, has some fetch lands, has a wasteland, just saying, all right, try to beat this Garrick. This is what you did to me last game, and I couldn't beat it, so let me see you beat it. Dude, how foul is Divert? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> well, let me ask you this question. As mm -hmm. foul as Divert was that game, do you board them out for game three because he's going to play around them now? Uh, I, I don't know, it's... Depend it's a dead it's a dead weight thing, right? Like how many bad cards you have, it's certainly gone down in value. Sure. It was actually that card was actually very valuable to us in a team seal the team seal portion of a uh, of a team pro tour back in the day, diverting uh, Alex Fartsman's repel onto one of his own creatures. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, it was Filthy McNasty. Yeah, it was I would be willing to bet you saw us nightmares about it. <laughs> <laughs> if I had to guess. So we're going to see Brian here. He has a two mana spell, but it is a life from the loam. And he has a spell snare for the loam. Saying, uh, 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 not this time. And Brian's facing lethal here, so. He does have a creeping tar pit that can jump in front, but I mean, obviously that is not That's impl the goal. implied lethal, that's yeah, where we're that at. Yeah, that's not the goal here. As you guys can't see the Garrick on screen, but it is in the top right there for Anton. He does still have Garrick Relentless pumping out the wolf tokens. Let me just make sure the coast is clear. Thought sees you. Pretty sure he knows the hand is, yeah. hand is lands, but that's okay. Rawr. Wolves. Down to seven. Creeping Tar Pit's going to jump in front, put him down, put Brian down to one. Oh, Anton's got uh, Dismember in his hand. He's not even going to get to block. Oh, okay. We're just going to kill him. You dismember it. And there's Dismember. Right. And I'm, there's the concession. And I'm dead. Garrick Relentless just, he's actually arguably doing more work in Legacy right now than he is in Standard. Which yeah. Is sort of a weird place. Or a sort of slow green board control attrition oriented planeswalker. Yeah, it's land. pretty pretty strange, isn't it? It's yeah. really strange to see it just dominate so well here. And uh, this is this is a, you're you're seeing Anton not even go back to the sideboard. Nope, diverts stay. Yeah, diverts there. Now, how do you feel about that? I mean, at least the bluff of boarding out divert something. Yeah, I mean, I would I would at least go through the box. I mean, yeah. that's a ton of information to just to not. Then I make him think yeah. about. So look him in the eye and be like, "I'm gonna divert you again." It's not. It's not not happening. Yeah, it's, not, <laughs> yeah. it's happening again. You are gonna get diverted. You're abrupt decay yeah. going elsewhere. Yeah. That was. That brings you back. I'm yeah. glad that brought you back. It was a. Uh, he tried to he tried to repel our dirty wear rat, and we sent it back to some like an Avon Wind reader he had or something. No one even was, knows. You're speaking a different language. What what do those cards even do? It it was. I, yeah, it was the shot. Dirty wear rat? The diver heard around the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Even when Wind Reader? That's a 3-3 three, three for 5, right? Yeah. Uh, that was like that was like the best blue common back in Odyssey, I think. They made the creatures a little bit different back then. Yeah, yeah. Wind I mean, Reader was busted. Yeah, it was completely absurd. You got to look at the top of someone's deck, I think, for one in a blue? Yeah. Or was it just your own? It was, it was certainly was... I think it was revealed theirs. Oh, it was both. Glenn Jones saying it's both. Yeah. But again, I'd like to check because what does Glenn Jones know? So yeah. if we could if we could find out. Oh, Glenn. Glenn, you were right. Congratulations. It was reveal. I think it was reveal both because. Yeah, yeah you could look at either one. Yeah. Three, but your three, opponent knew also. Yeah. Three three flyer for five. Just wow. That was just the Boutros Boutros. How do you beat day. it? I don't know. How do you beat it? It's impossible. If you play three three for five and limit it now, that's the flying. You just get laughed at. Yeah. <laughs> what you? Even, what picture take that? Yeah. Three three flash flyer is. Yeah, yeah, you cut that thing a reasonable percentage of the <laughs> yeah. time, you know. Fairies and Fairy Invaders is like number 18. It's fine, deck. I guess, if you had to play one, it's no big deal, yeah. but you're trying to kind of cut them. What is a Dirty Wear Rat? I know it's, I, I'm going to say it's three and a black. Okay. So four mana, two, two? No. No, that's not him? Two, three, uh, black, discard a card, threshold, plus two, plus two, and can no longer block. Mm. Just a really elegant design. Just filthy rat. It's a filthy rat. Just a filthy, just gross rat. I actually can't remember if it's black to regenerate or black to just do nothing. I think it's black regenerate. Well, how, black to do nothing? To discard a card. Black oh, okay. discard. Okay, okay. Such a dirty rat. Yeah, I was right. Taking me back to my youth. Oh, we have a text here from Huey Jensen saying that you can't stop that dirty rat. <laughs> <laughs> Huey, I know this is uh, this is in your day, so I appreciate the appreciate the tweet, letting us know that not not one more mere mortal can stop that filthy filthy rat. Yeah, that card was also incredible, and that if you if you saw that now, there's like no chance you'd ever put in a, in a limited deck. Yeah, it was among the better black commons. Whew. It's actually unkillable. <laughs> it's basically unkillable. Okay. Un yeah, unstoppable rat. As we have a death right shaman finally. Yeah, making finally. making an appearance. First in our three games here of legacy for Brian. And death right, fetch land and death right shaman is about the opening you would hope to get with this deck. And there is the shaman seeing everything it can do. What can't it do? Taps for mana, gains life, kills your opponent, dies to innocent dead, blood. Just you know, dead. Nothing, nothing it can't do. Would have liked to have kept that. Yeah. Now, I <laughs> now I can't win. Looks like Brian's hand has loam. I'm not positive we have any wastelands to go along with it. I assume that if we could waste them, we would just I'll take the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. we would just go go at them. Innocent blood, as you guys see on the screen, kind of old school. I remember that one got printed. That's what this is. That's when I took my step into competitive magic. That was a that was a good removal spell back in the day. I believe wasn't Huey the one who put the innocent blood anarchist draft deck on the map back in the day? Oh, I think really? that might have. I think what a way to just tie all the commentary together. Yeah, that's actually the case. Incredible. So now we have a big loam here for the two fetches. So you see Brian putting putting one of his, you know, card drawing engines online. Yeah. A unique card drawing engine, as it were. Well, yeah. Unless he's unless he has the corresponding wasteland, there's sort of a cap on how efficient or what the upside of that card is. Yeah. If you can tie it together with some wastelands, it could be awesome. As we're going Thoughtseize. to see Thoughtseize. we'll find out. We see so Snapcaster, Snapcaster Mage, Mage. Okay. and Snapcaster Land, so Brian needs Brian needs to start loaming actually just to get some stuff in his graveyard. Yeah, like a brainstorm or something, yeah. just something that does anything. And and very important here, Anton played a basic island. Uh, with Brian on, with Brian having access to loam, it's gonna be very important for him to, to find basics. Because yep. he won't be able to function. You see an abrupt decay drawn there for Brian. So Brian chooses not to dredge. Just plays a fetch land and says go. So he can at least set up Brainstorm to be able to, you know, hide those lands and fetch away. And draws another Still draws one. again. And it's uh -oh. a Garrick, I believe. How do these guys just draw their Garrick so much? They both have one. <laughs> just a Garrick Rodeo, and they both have one copy of the card. And, like, neither player can stop it when it's in play, and they can barely counter it. <laughs> Well, it's, you want to draw exactly one because the other guy can't beat it or kill it. <laughs> so you want one because the second one's completely unnecessary because they're already dead to the first one. Yeah, sack it in your face. <laughs> it's Garrick time, baby. Yeah, we're going to go for it. You 
Could you imagine if Anton Vendillion clicked in, in response to that fetch, fetch land? land? Yeah. Ugh. It would have, yeah. You want to talk about a dirty wear rat? Yeah, it's no, it's no divert your repel, but that is <laughs> a piece of pal action. Not much is. Hi, yeah. Is There's this a, good? Yep. And we know Anton has two copies of Spell Pierce in his deck. He also has stuff like Force of Will. Oh, no. Oh, no, it's in. It's right. in. Okay. All right. Is that it? That, that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that could be it. Just, <laughs> Sorry. Four mana Planeswalker. Are you dead? Or, oh. or my dad? Or who's dead? It doesn't look like Anton has green mana. He has Brainstorm. Looks like he has a Loam shuffling through there. Yeah, but he's still missing green. I had to assume we had to brainstorm and find green mana, or we need to get something going soon. Yeah, you can't let this Garrick just sit around. All right, there's a brainstorm. Two, three. He found a he found a misty rain for us, so okay. we got green. You can see Anton doing the little nod of his head. Yeah, it's back right. in it. And and obviously that's important too, not just for green mana, but can also shuffle away these these the stinkers to brainstorm as well with the uh, with the uh, fetch lands. So. Uh, a pretty good brainstorm there in the main phase. Yeah. See what he's what he's gonna throw back. I I, I assume we're inclined to just try to throw back some spot removal yeah. that we have here. The issue here is: is there actual any way for Anton to get a Garrick Relentless off the board outside of his own Garrick Relentless? He has a Maelstrom Pulse in the sideboard. And yeah, Tomb Stalker can attack it. All right, uphill climb. Oh well, yeah, I mean he's. It might actually be fairly close to Thought Seize reveals. Snapcaster, Abrupt Decay, two lands. I have to assume we're taking Snapcaster here given how light. Uh, okay. That's a little bit surprising. Yeah, Brian has nothing to do with his mana, so the Snapcaster yeah. is. I'm not entirely sure what that Ooh. accomplishes. Hey, maybe he has Divert. Oh no, not again. Not again. Brian's already got. You know, battle scars in the first one. <laughs> Can't do it to him again. Can't he? As we're going to see a Misty Rainforest here get sacked on the end of turn. Probably find a trop. I would be willing. Maybe a basic forest. He's yeah, thinking he's, the he's same going thing. Yeah. Yeah, going, <laughs> going through the same thing that you're going through there, yeah. Eventually sells on the forest. On the trop, rather. I'm surprised. I probably would have gone for forest there given that, you know, he has... Does he need a third blue mana for something? Yeah. So we'll see if that's going to come back to bite him. I mean, it's definitely a risk, as we do see a wasteland here. So we actually, he actually has it set up where we can, for example, click him in his draw step, and if Brian tries to snapcast or abrupt decay, we'll just divert yeah, it. The ultimate punishment. For example, not saying that Anthon does have the divert, but I feel like him taking abrupt decay over Snapcaster means that's where we're at. Yeah, I mean that's what it feels like to me. Or I guess he could have. I guess he could have surgical extraction in hand too. That justifies it as well. Sure. As we do see, Brian does play a six land now. So if he does Snapcaster plus abrupt decay, he can actually pay for the divert. Yeah. Two wolves coming in. Now, what are we going to see here? A little main phase action. I think we're sliding a Tarmogoyf in? Yes, we are. So now we're and there's audience. Abrupt Decay? Yep. That's exactly what you talked about. Yeah, just, yeah, just Abrupt Decay, just at, Abrupt Decay greater than sign Tarmogoyf. Yeah. Basically. Anton still needs to find a way to get out from under this Garrick. Although if he does, Brian's hand doesn't have a whole lot left over. Yeah, I mean, he's got not only does he have to get underneath Garrick, he's got to take care of these wolf tokens as well. And it's very interesting, you know, one of the things that we brought up uh, during game one is how Pernicious Deed interacts favorably with Garrick just because it doesn't kill Planeswalkers. Well, now it's like that's not even out for Anton to draw to because, again, it doesn't actually kill Garrick. It takes yeah. care of the wolf tokens, but the problem is still there. Yeah, I mean, he basically... The and there's a thought thing. So now we'll now we'll see what's up. I mean, a big thing here. I mean, click is a 
click if he can get it to stick as a way to get out from to just kill the Garrick, but he still needs to find some answer to the tokens. Yeah. So then that requires a deed or a maelstrom pulse or something. As we are going to see a Vendillion click here now in response to the Thoughtseize. Let's see who he's targeting. Oh, he has Spell Snare in hand. That's why he left. Snapcaster gotcha. over the K. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And I cannot spell snare fast enough. Yeah. And he's like, eh. Scavenging ooze plus wasteland. Yeah. And now the thoughts right. he's yep. resolves, it takes care of the scavenging ooze, so it's just a hand of wasteland and nothing. And Garrick is just going to be able to keep churning out tokens here. And just going to overwhelm Anton. I don't think there's any way to get out of the situation. You know, if he does take care of the Garrick, there's still going to be three two twos, I mean, potentially got, four. Yeah, it's 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 deed or maelstrom pulse. Okay. Those are the draws that he has right here that matter. And then they come. So, I don't think you can block here. You just got to take this hit. Yeah, I'm not quite sure exactly what blocking would yep, accomplish. Yep. Yeah, yeah, he, he comes to the same conclusion. Yeah. And there's another one. So yeah, Anton definitely drawing live here. I mean, it's. How do we do? Not a very confident-looking shuffle right there. But it's a shuffle nonetheless. And that's what's important. His hand is Wasteland plus, and there it is. There's a concession. So Brian, Garrick Relentless defeats Garrick Relentless two <laughs> games to one. Yeah, yeah, might as well be. Brian Bronzoan casts Garrick Relentless more times than Anton did, and that takes the match down, I guess. As much as he has tailor-made his deck to be able to win the mirror, yep. it came down to actual one card and it resolving, which was Garrick Relentless both games. I don't know. You may want to have a second copy or, like, a counter spell or something. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe but, maybe another Garrick Relentless in the sideboard for the mirror. Who yeah, knows? But Garrick, uh, Garrick definitely on display there, in a way that you don't even really see in standard. You know what I mean? No, no. Yeah, not I mean, at all. with Restoration Angel and Thunder Maw Hellkite being huge parts of the standard format, it's just not. It's often just quite quite hostile to Garrick because it comes into play, makes Wolf, and then just dies. Yeah, and then just dies immediately. Yeah. And Legacy doesn't have that sort of stuff going on nearly to the same extent. There's a little bit of Restoration Angel and then zero Thundermaw Hellkite. Yeah. So, and you're able to protect it a little bit better with Force of Will, set it up with Thoughtseize, etc. So. Mm -hmm.